my mama never used to say, if you don't feel it now, just so keep on living. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs>
Our scripture lesson today will be taken from the Gospel of St. John. The Gospel of St. John, chapter number 12. Chapter 12, starting at verse number 7. John 12 and 7. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 12, verse number 7. and standing, say amen. amen. You need a minute, say wait a minute. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Uh-huh. Against the day of my burying has she kept this. Mm. For the poor always ye have with you. Yeah. But me ye have not always. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, Mm -hmm. but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, Mm -hmm. because that by reason of him many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus Mm -hmm. on the next day much people that would come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. Uh, They took branches of palm trees, went forth to meet him, and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And, And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon as it It's written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, thy king cometh sitting on an ass's coat. Amen. Thus in the reading of God's word, it is already blessed. You may be seated. Amen. Just got to hold on, Father. Just keep thinking and keep 
trust in that, believe in that. We don't know what's going on. We're going to give you glory, honor, and praise today. Lord, you're worthy. We want to thank you. Thank you. Let's pour out your blessing for your pastor. That's a great word. That's a special blessing for Reverend Fuller. Let me tell you, Lord, Lord, every church family that's here today, we thank you for asking them to see another Sunday. Lord, we ask that you bless our family. Some are lost and some are saved, not saved. Lord, we pray for them right now. Save somebody today. Somebody needs you. Even those bodies that are racked with pain this morning. Touch right now. I walk, I walk alone. 
you are available, we ask that you please come out and support this worthwhile effort regardless of where you live. Next Sunday, April the 9th, we will have sunrise service at 6 a.m. Sunday school will be as usual, and we will have the Sunday morning worship service with communion. Please plan to attend. Pastor Smiling is asking if anyone has need of anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to him or one of our church officers of the church. The church will assist as best as we can. Please tell a neighbor, tell a friend, tell everyone about our weekly services. Sunday school is every Sunday morning from 9.45 to 10.30 a.m. Our Sunday morning worship service is at 11.15 a.m. And our virtual Bible study is at 7.15 p.m. on Wednesday night. This has been reading of the church announcements. Thank you and God bless you. Amen. Church say amen. 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 Uh, we are... Uh, I'm so grateful to Sister Ralph for the reading of the announcements. We ask that you would govern yourselves accordingly to all that has been read in your hearing. For right now, just stand right where you are and bow your head. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying while I'm onward bound. Lord, place my feet on higher ground. Most holy, all wise, everlasting, and eternal God, our Father. It's in the name of Jesus that we bow before you to give you praise. We come this morning to celebrate God, celebrate your son Jesus. Even on this Palm Sunday morning, Lord, the, tri the triumphal entry of your son Jesus into the city of Jerusalem. Father, we, we bow down, Lord, to give your name praise. You've been so good to us, Lord. When we look back over our lives, you brought us from a mighty known world. You picked us up when we were down, placed our feet on higher ground. You even turned our life completely around. And God, for that, we say thank you. You've been so good to us. Hallelujah, Jesus. And glory to your name. Lord, you've been so good. You brought us through the low places. You brought us, you took us through the high places. Lord, Lord, all in all, you never left us alone. For you were right there with us. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for food on the table. Thank you for clothes on our back. Thank you for a roof of our head. Thank you for health and strength. Thank you, Lord, for a little money in our pockets. Thank you, thank you for, Lord God, being so good to us, even when we did not deserve it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for being a covering God, for being a covering over us, even when the enemy tried to destroy us. To shift us at We're so grateful, God. We thank you, Lord, for your saving grace. How one day we were lost, but you saved us.
we'll make sure we got plenty now. If you need two, we can have two of them. Uh, the usher ready, ready to give you the palm leaf. Cause we want to talk a little bit about that palm leaf. All right. Just a little bit. Prayerfully with that. Help the Lord. We'll get what He wants us to get out. We greet you in His blessed and His holy name. He's high and lofty. Yes. Uh, he's an awesome, a strong, and a mighty God. Yes, he is. He's a righteous and upright God. Yes. And there's absolutely all power Amen. is in His hands. Amen. Not a fraction or a portion of the power is to be, but all power. Don't let nobody fool you into thinking he is not all powerful because he has all power. Uh, to include it, he has healing power. He has saving power. We learned this morning in Sunday school he has re he has resurrecting power. He has power to give life and he has power to take life away. All power. He can mend the brokenhearted. He can recover yeah. sight for the blind, restore hearing yeah. for that which is deaf. He can. Yeah. He, he's a. He's a powerful God. Yes, Amen. And this same God woke us all up this morning. Amen. Didn't He do it? Yes. Yes. And he started us on our way. Yes. He allowed us to behold the beauty of a brand new Sunday morning, uh, one we've never seen before, yes. and it being. Not just any old day, but this Palm Sunday. Amen. Kept you and blessed you all throughout the year long and allowed you to come to the house of prayer one more game. Amen. One more game. Amen. Uh, here it is, one year later on Palm Sunday morning. To witness and behold in the land of the living another wonderful pre-Easter Sunday, what we call Palm Sunday. Amen. Somebody ought to thank the Lord. Amen. Is there anybody in here who's grateful? Yes, Amen. 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 That God has blessed you. Yes, so here we are at another beautiful Palm Sunday <laughs> celebration service. I want to thank uh, the missionary ministry for uh, making these available for us on today. Amen. But we want Amen. to. Here we are again celebrating. Amen. Palm Sunday for the Christian is a huge deal. It dates back to the early, early days in the early church. Amen. Palm Sunday is always observed on the Sunday just prior to Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. It is marked by Jesus' final and triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Right. Amen. Uh, it is normally the ending of what is called Lent Amen. and the beginning of Passion or Holy Week leading into what we call the Resurrection Day or Easter Day. Amen. Now the date palm was a symbol of the tree of life in many traditions and cultures. The date palm. Including the Genesis story of the tree in the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. This was considered a sacred tree for the Jews. It came to represent the Old Testament law. Mm -hmm. It would be emboldened on documents and embroidered on coins. Mm -hmm. But for Christians, this simply symbolized that of victory. Mm -hmm. uh, long before Christianity, the palm tree and its leaves were seen as symbols of resurrection, immortality, and rebirth. Amen. Thank God, my state is a palmetto state. I come from South Carolina, which its tree is the palm tree. Amen. I don't know why they got the palm tree, but we got a palm tree. So long before Christianity, the palm tree and its leaves were seen as symbols of resurrection, immortality, and rebirth, regeneration. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, Riding on a donkey. Now you know the Bible calls it an ass. His disciples don't, don't go and say, Pastor Corson up in here. <laughs> Amen. That's what the Bible says. His, his disciples followed Roman tradition of placing palm leaves, yes. palm branches, in a conqueror's path. Mm -hmm. It was a tradition. And waving palm leaves 
to welcome a triumphant war hero yeah. into the city after fierce battle out on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Today we as Christians, we see that Jesus' victory was not on the battlefield against an enemy army, mm -hmm. but it was his victory over sin, death, and the grave. Mm -hmm. And we even today, we wave our palm leaves because we, we give him glory over his victory over sin, death, and the grave. Yeah. We see Jesus as victorious in the war and the fight against evil and all manner of darkness and wickedness. And that's all we're talking about today. We're talking about this palm leaf, but we're really talking about celebrating his victory, good God over evil, darkness, and wickedness. Our text commemorates the spreading of palms and, and clothing in Jesus' path as he approaches the holy city. Can you see it back there? He's riding on this, 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 this animal, this beast of burden, this lowly beast, the, the donkey, the ass, and, and he's approaching the city. And all the people that would show up having palm leaves in hand and taking off of their cloak and spreading this in front of this warrior that's coming into the city victorious and triumphant into his path. Palm Sunday also denotes the period in which Jesus would begin staging. Here we go, here we go. He began staging events relative to Calvary's cross scenery and setting up necessary things and happenings that would later end, end up for victory for us and liberation for us. The things that he was preparing on this day was getting ready to set us up for victory, for total freedom and liberation. It all started on this same Sunday, on Sunday. That's why it's so, so utterly important because my salvation and your salvation started being staged on Palm Sunday. Yes. Good God from Mount Zion. Uh, Palm Sunday also the period in which Jesus would begin the necessary things that, that would later end up in our total freedom and liberation and freedom from the grip of death. Yes. Some Palm Sunday has its place in Bible history as it as it fulfills prophecy. That of Zechari Zechariah 9 and Zechariah 9 and 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a coat, uh, the foal of an ass. Psalm 118 was also sung and shouted out on this Palm Sunday. Uh, some of the events that took place on Palm Sunday is worthy of our attention. This day and this hour was the most public hour. I said the most public hour mm -hmm. of Jesus' life. Mm -hmm. Many had gathered to see him. Mm -hmm. Many had come to this place to see the master. All four gospel writers were careful to capture this event in their writings. Mm -hmm. Not just the three synoptic Gospels, but all four Gospels. Mm -hmm. He rode in on a donkey. Never man ever before rode. Mm -hmm. This day was a day of great joy. Yet Jesus wept mm -hmm. that day. Can I get a witness? Yes. It was a day of coronation and great reception and, uh, and favor. Yet Jesus ends this day by moving, listen to me church, by moving his enemies. Good God. Uh, to form an alliance against him. Very intentional. He uprooted the temple thieves and drove out money chains. Palm Sunday. It, it, it marks the beginning of a drastic turn in the ministry of Jesus and our master. Jesus' life, as you've often hear me say, is broken down into three parts or three periods, period of obscurity, where not much is said or written about him. Then there was a period of popularity where he was healing and, and giving sight to the blind, deaf to the ear, making lame to walk and the dumb to talk. And then there's this period that he was setting the stage for the period of humiliation where he would have to go up on a, and hang on a cross and be put to open shame. But the only one that's really put the shame in the end is the devil. Amen. We find Jesus at the end of his period of popularity. And he was about to enter a life of humiliation. It all started on 
this day, Palm Sunday. But there, there is another thing drastically significant about Palm Sunday, and that is the palm leaf. Mm -hmm. The palm leaf, and, and in some places it's called the palm branch. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, I want you to know that, uh, and, and, and as, I, as, as I've mentioned before, in pre-Christian times, the palm was regarded as a symbol of victory, mm -hmm. power, and strength, mm -hmm. even before Christianity and before the church origin. And the palm leaf was adopted by the early Christians in the early church. The Greek philosopher Oregon stated that the palm leaf is symbolic to victory in that war waged by the spirit in man against the flesh. The palm leaf then becomes a strong Christian symbol denoting loyalty to Christ and loyalty to the Christian faith. I'm going to need y'all to follow me just a little bit. All right. and there are three things I'm going to talk about as it pertains to this text. Uh, and the three things it is. Number one, I want to horn in on that thing when it says much people. <laughs> Not all, but much people came <laughs> with palm leaves. Not all, but much people. Num number two, I'm going to horn in on, you can't meet Jesus and not have a praise. You can't meet Jesus and not have a praise. And then, then I want to talk about number three, the third thing. Why ride a donkey and not a horse? All right. mm -hmm. Can I get a witness? Amen. So we talk about them three things and I'm out of your way. Amen. You can go enjoy this beautiful sunny day. Bible says in verse 12, on the next day, much people. Somebody say much people. Much, much people. people. Well, come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. They took with them branches of palm trees. Uh, the palm leaf in hand. Uh, the word says much people. Why not all people? But it says much people. Not all, but much people took palm leaves. Now, you know, in any sect, somebody ain't going to act right. Can I get a witness? Am I right about it? In any group, everybody's going to see red and somebody's going to see blue. It kind of seems to me that the palm leaf was brought to honor the king and to honor him who would bring peace and vic who would bring peace and victory to the entire nation mm -hmm. and to all mankind. And so how how dare I take an attitude here? I take an attitude. Mm -hmm. I take a big attitude. How dare you show up to this party? This is the wrong place to show up. And don't have your palm leaf. Right. Yes, sir. It's offensive. Yes, sir. Everybody else got their praise and their honor in hand. And you show up here with your bad self. Yeah. How dare, how dare, how dare, how dare some of them not bring their palm leaf. And, and you're going to find out real soon that I ain't really talking about this leaf. You're going to find out. How dare you show up and not have that thing which you honor Jesus with. That joy, that praise, yeah. that loyalty. How dare you show up? Uh -huh. You know, some folk just want to see what happens. Uh -huh. <laughs> they just, they just want to be in, the, in, the, in, the, in there with the, with the crowd. What's what going on over there? You got to go to work today. Yeah, but I'm going to take off. But I got to see what's happening up through there. Can I get a witness to you? Is that mankind? That's just, that's, that's just like how we are, right? Tell your neighbor, I know that's right. I know that's right. How dare you show up and not bring the symbol of honor, the symbol of praise? How dare some would come to the place where Jesus was and be in the same space with our Lord with no palm leaf in hand and no praise in heart? How dare folk would make their way out to this meeting place where Jesus was to pass through and not lay a palm branch at his feet? How dare you show up to be where Jesus is with no palm branch, no palm leaf? You ought to know the palm leaf is a spiritual thing. It's a symbolic thing. This is going to die and decay and go back to the earth. But it's the symbolic and spiritual significance it's a symbolic, it's symbolic to victory in the Lord and loyalty and devotion to him. A symbol of dedication, love, honor, praise towards our master. 
Many of us are loyal to everything well, but right. Jesus. Well, I know I'm right, but I ain't talking about y'all, because I know y'all love the Lord. <laughs> Every last one of you love him all the way up and down. Amen. But there are some folk. Yes, Can I get a witness? Yes, yes. Yeah, there are some folk who, who don't love the Lord. Yes. Many of us are loyal to everything. Many, many folk are loyal to everything uh -huh. but Jesus. Uh -huh. Loyal to the job. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you show up before the clock, before the time. <laughs> now why is it that you show up at the job before it started the time? Then you come to church just dragging in. <laughs> already, already 20, 30 minutes late. You ain't in no hurry at all. I'll be feeling funny. I'll throw that old hand over. Hurry up again. Run over there and get in. <laughs> I love all of you. Amen. We're loyal to the boss. Loyal to the hubby or the wife. Some are loyal to the Bible. Can I hear a witness? Y'all do know there's still, still some breaking saints, right? Can I get a witness? Let me leave it alone. Loyal to everything. And in the text, by laying out. Come on, y'all gonna make me go back there? I hear some giggling. Loyal, loyal to that bottle. Popping them bottles. Y'all ain't gonna make me go back there. <laughs> Everything. And then the text, by laying out the palm branch or the palm leaf, they were merely saying that, I'm loyal to you, Jesus. It suggests the notion that we love you, Master. We love you, and we surrender, and we bow down. That's what it's saying. That's what the palm leaf is saying. It, it, we surrender all unto thee. Amen. We bow down before you, Lord. It's suggests honor and glory and majesty toward Jesus, and, and that he's worthy. Amen. It suggests that, Lord, you're worthy. Yeah. Lord, you are my king, and you're worthy to be praised. And out of this multitude of people, some had the audacity, the unmitigated call to show up empty-handed and nothing in heart. Good God from Mount Zion. Ask your neighbor, you got your palm leaf, man? <laughs> Not everybody brought the leaf when they went to meet Jesus. That tells me everybody did not cherish the Lord. Amen. Everybody in the congregation did not devote themselves to Jesus. Not all were committed to Jesus and committed to the faith. Not everyone who cried, Lord, Lord, is ready and willing to accept him and receive him as Lord and Savior. And so some just came. Some just showed up. I imagine some folk came just because of the crowd and they... Uh, good God, and they love being a part of the in crowd. So just love the spotlight and uh, where things going on, I need to be there. Uh, wherever, wherever the large crowd is. So you'll find some right there in the crowd. Some, no doubt, but just plain old nosy. Amen. Amen. Might be one of my cousins. <laughs> Y'all know why I said that. Just came to see what all the, all the noise and commotion is all about. I'm putting myself in the text. It said not all. It said much people. So just not all came with the right intentions. The Bible said much people, not all. But much of them took, did in fact took the branch, the palm branches. I'm going to just go out on a limb and say, if you didn't lay out your palm branch, at least take your coat off and lay I hope you have enough uh -huh. presence of mind. Can I get a witness, church? Yeah, the yeah, palm branches, leaves. If they went to meet me, Jesus. The next thing, not all, but some. Some came, not all. So hopefully that's not you. Tell your neighbor that's not me. <laughs> Y'all said that like y'all still sleep. 
Man, tell them like it mean it. Say, that's not me, man. That's not me, man. Great day in the morning. Lord, y'all got me going. The next thing is they began to praise the master. Amen. Much people took palm leaves and went for the meeting. And the very next thing they do is they praise God. Y'all feel this little difference in spirit today? I'm working with it, but I'm walking slow. I ain't going to take my time. I don't want you to miss the spiritual significance. Very next thing after the leaves and the cloaks what not they threw out, is praise came out of their mouths. Y'all see it in the text, right? I ain't making it up. The Bible said they cried, Hosanna. Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Now you really can't meet Jesus and not have a praise. I promise you, if Jesus showed up right here on the spot, you're going to have to praise him. But so much power and so much energy and so much light is in his presence. You, you can't get weak, your knees, you get, remember that song, weak at the knees, you get weak at the knees. When Jesus shows up, you can't meet him and not have a praise. People in the text, they heard he was coming to town. They heard about him. They came, they came to him and they cried, they praised out uh, to, unto him come in the presence of the Lord, there, there got to be a praise. Uh, now they, they said Hosanna to the highest in Matthew's gospel, and, and the word Hosanna is of Hebrew origin, transliteration of the word uh, Hosanna, which, which means to save or rescue. Right? And, and when you think about what the Lord has done for us, how he brought you out of darkness, and ushered you into his marvelous life. When you think about how he picked you up when you were all the way down and placed your feet on solid ground, you, you ought to cry, Hosanna! You ought to shout and give God praise and say hallelujah and let him know that you understand hallelujah is the highest praise. I can't praise you no higher when I say hallelujah to your name, God. When you think about how he healed your body when you were sick, you holler, hallelujah. Kept a roof over your head and food on your table. Kept you in your right mind. You were shot whole in the highest. You paid your bills. Kept you safe from the hell, hell hounds and protected you from the devil dogs. Watched over you morning, noon, and night. You will holler, hallelujah. God from Mount Zion. Hallelujah, which is the highest praise. Tell your neighbor he's worthy. He's worthy. People cried out, Hosanna, and blessed be the name of the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. And so it is after they heard of him coming, and they came to meet him and praised him in the highest. The focus shifts to Jesus. Uh, verse 14 says, he found a young ass or a donkey, yeah. and sat thereon and rode this donkey to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But why does a king over all things? choose to ride on such a lowly beast of burden, my third talking point, for his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Well, for the sake of knowing, number one, to fulfill prophecy was a reason. Zechariah 9 and 9, it states that that's how he would come, riding on an ass. Number two, riding a donkey would symbolize peace and not war. Riding on a horse would symbolize war. Can I get a witness, church? Because you need to get on in your research and figure it out. Well, I'm like, why are you riding a donkey? You should get on one of them pretty old horses, the, one of them Cloverdales with them nice little feet. That just, you know, well, why are you riding on a donkey? That, 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 Y'all ain't gonna pray with me. But there's a reason. Third, the donkey is connected to, to a conqueror. People, people, why, uh, while ride horses and chariots, uh, they were connected to kings and people of a noble class. But his choice of a donkey instead of a horse was God's way of saying he came as a king who would serve and save. I'm not big and uppity and all high and whatnot. I, yeah, I'm a king, but I'm a ride on the beast of the lowest nobility. That you understand that I came to save and to serve. See, the king, when many kings want to be served, but Jesus said, I came so I can serve you. Can I get a witness, church? That's 
why he had a donkey. Kind of sound like Baptist church folk to me. Some are saved and always carrying around a palm leaf in their heart, ready to meet Jesus with a praise. But then there are some who are not saved and absent and void of the palm leaf. Some love the Lord with all their heart and some don't even know who he is. So some lay all on the line for Jesus and some can really care less. Some, some, the God, the church, y'all ain't gonna pray with me. The church is not much different than the people in the text. See, nowadays we've got to have our own palm leaf in our heart. Forget about it, because this is going to the trash in a little bit, right? And if it don't, it's going to decay and go back to the dust. So in, in, in essence, we need to lift the symbolic significance of this and have it in heart. Can I get a witness? Now, if you have it in heart, you can say like the song where I say the, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away from it. Because it's mine. You can lock me down. But you, yeah, it's, it's in my heart. Be that right with me. It's in my heart. If you got it in your heart, nobody can take it away. If you got it in your heart, that's what it needs to be. Keep it on. We've got to wear that palm leaf 24-7, 365. It's not a physical thing, but it's a spiritual thing. It's not natural, but it's a supernatural thing. Palm leaf I'm referring to it is not the leaf that the ushers gave you this morning. Good God from Mount Zion. That's good to see it. Yeah, I know what it looks like. But I'm talking about the spiritual significance of that leaf in your heart. You don't have to wait for the next palm leaf palm Sunday to get one of these because you got it in your heart. Can I get them in this church? Thank you, missionary, for bringing them, but look at here. I'm going to put it in here. Yes, sir. Ain't that right, Deacon Ham? Yes, sir. What are you talking about, preacher? Well, but these people laid their palm leaf in front of Jesus to suggest they loved him, to suggest they trusted him, and received him as Lord and King. They brought their palm leaf to make a statement about their faith in Jesus. To suggest that they had faith and they wanted him as Lord and Savior. And I just want to know, do you, do you have your palm leaf? After all of this information, do you have? your palm leaf. Amen. Not that physical thing. I know you got one from the usher. We made sure you get one this morning. But it's not about that leaf. It's about the spiritual significance. It's about your love for the Lord. I just want to know, do you have it with you today? Yeah, you ought to ask your neighbor, do you have yours? Yeah, yeah, you ought to tell that neighbor, tell him I brought it with me. Because it's staying in my heart. There are some who don't have deep down on the inside. There are some who don't have the Holy Spirit burning in their bones. There are some church folk who don't have the relationship with Mary's baby. Don't have the love of Jesus. And don't have the joy of the Lord. But I stop by to say you need that palm leaf deep down in your bones. You need the palm leaf of joy and praise. You need palm leaf of peace and tranquility. There's a palm leaf of patience and long suffering. You need your palm leaf of faith with works because faith without works is dead. You need your palm leaf. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor, I've got my palm leaf. Do you have yours? Good God from Mount Zion. You need a palm leaf of righteousness. You need a palm leaf of forgiveness. You need a palm leaf of compassion. You need a palm leaf of gentleness. You need a palm leaf of unity. You need a palm leaf of brotherly love. You need a palm leaf of sisterly compassion. You need a palm leaf that represents the joy, the joy of the Lord, which is my strength. And I don't know about you, but I've got the joy. The joy of Jesus deep down in my soul. Furthermore, like I said earlier, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And since the world didn't give it, 
about what it represents. It represents victory for Jesus. By way of the cross, it represents Jesus' entry into Jerusalem to surrender himself, to be condemned and to death by crucifixion. And I don't know about you, but you ought to remember that Jesus would sacrifice himself and lay down his life for an old wretched person like you and an old wretched person like me. On Sunday, let Jesus to Calvary. On Sunday, let Jesus to shed his
winding up. Brothers and sisters, we don't have much time left. If you're not saved, let me say that loud and clear. So there's a place for the dead, there's a place for the living. After this life. Church say it. Let the church say it.